Now, she has made the world's 50 most beautiful people list twice, but Sandra Bullock didn't look great when she left home in New York last week. Is this as a result of plastic surgery gone wrong? Well, top surgeon Dr. Patrick Tracy joins us now to tell us more, along with a list of other celebrities who may have gone one step too far in the pursuit of physical perfection. Good morning to you, Patrick. Good morning, Anne. How are you? Where do we start? Okay, Sandra Bullock, this is all about basically celebrities uh, you know, or people in the limelight who are under pressure to look beautiful and have taken it one step too far, ultimately. Sure. And they're just getting carried away, really, aren't they? Absolutely. Well, um, it's interesting, the f picture on um, Sandra Bullock yeah. is showed in the Daily Mail and it showed her with a big sort of swelling on the left side of her mandible. And um, on that looks like um, a, a huge boil or something, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, the interesting thing is that this could be, to an extent, medical. It could be something like a... An abscess or something? tumour, an abscess on a tooth or whatever. But I looked at the Oscar uh, film footage and she had already starting there. And we think what could be happening is because she's got quite a sort of square a very jaw. very well-defined square jaw, hasn't that mm. Somebody may have put in Botox to try and correct a condition we call bruxism. And as a consequence, if you don't go down with the needle to the periosteum and get the lower level of the masseter muscles, the muscle can herniate out through the top ones. And this is a common effect. Actually, I've seen somebody in London recently who had a very, very similar thing done by somebody who didn't know what to do. This is becoming a very popular procedure with buttocks, particularly by Asian people. And in, in Dublin particularly, we do you know, quite a number of Asian people who would have quite square jaws and who want to define the lower um, part of their face uh, when you originally inject in Botox, it gets smaller, and over a period of two or three cycles, and a cycle of Botox is four to six months, the, the muscle tends to atrophy and they get a very nice mm. sort of defined um, definition on their jaw. So if this was plastic surgery or Botox mm -hmm. that Santa Bullock was having, mm -hmm. what would she have been trying to achieve, a softer jawline? If it was done for that, a softer jawline, yes. Okay. Yeah, and okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. She is also in her, her mid now, getting on to late 40s. Uh, mm -hmm. so, and she's at the, but she's at the peak of her commercial career. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not that m many jobs for, mm -hmm. for 35 plus women, let alone mm -hmm. 40 plus women. In, and she's just a baby very recently. She as looks well, a, a, yeah. A, a, yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. Um, but she's kind of coming to the end of what she can physically do as a leading lady, isn't she? So, sure. So, do you think that, that, that people in her position are prepared to take? stupid risks well despite the fact that you think that they have the best medical advice in the world because they can yeah, afford it yeah. there's an interesting thing that's starting in, in the west coast uh, of the states and i don't know whether it's going to go, go here or not and it's called the zero face and they reckon that everybody now is trying to look 36. people in hollywood not only are marking their age down from 45 to 36 but people in the 20s are marking their way back up again <laughs> to look 36 as well so 36 <laughs> is Individuality the optimal age, gone wrong. well this is what they're right. saying, but well, having said that... was the best, they were the best years, because you're old enough to have sense yes. and still young enough to enjoy it. But they're including people like, you know, Heidi Montage and that within it, who I would have thought just had bad work done, yeah. you know, and, um, and looked older after it, you we, know? We have, a, we have a shot here of maybe the most... Uh, uh, she's probably the most famous bad uh, uh, mm -hmm. advertisement for, for cosmetic surgery there is, is Jocelyn Wildenstein. OK. This is what, what can happen sure. when you go this completely This is a very bonkers. interesting case, Mark. You know, this started... Um, she must have some some form of dysmorphia. Oh, Patrick. I think so, absolutely. Uh, she found her husband um, in bed with a young girl and to try and win back his affection, what she did was, because she knew he liked people with cat-like sort of feline structures, she went to get surgery down that route. She didn't win him, but she certainly won one of the most horrendous looking faces, you know, sort of in the business. She looks like she's been mauled by a cat. <laughs> she does, actually. It's and and the sad falling. fact is, and I was chatting Noel earlier outside, yeah. he met her in New York recently, and um, she um, believes that she looks quite beautiful. And, and this, to an extent, is... Um, and she spent $4 million achieving this look. I was going to ask you, Patrick, yeah. is this figure correct? Or am, is, I, yeah. am I seeing it incorrectly? <laughs> $4 million. <laughs> Apparently, yes. Yeah. She said multiple sort of procedures. And, you know, recently I read she got prosthetics in her infraorbital area just underneath her eye and it caused peripheral vision loss. So she's had damage so to her... So there's all sorts of knock-on effects. Can I ask you something? I mean, you're a very reputable um, um, doctor. And, mm -hmm. like, the top guys in America are all board certified. Mm -hmm. How could any doctor... Mm -hmm. with a shred of, of professional integrity, mm. allow mm. that to walk out of the surgery. It's beyond comprehension, isn't it? And particularly, I'd say a lot of these people have psychological addictions, probably 
body dysmorphic disorder and I, I agree with you it, it is horrendous some of the and some of the people we'll be looking at later on I mean well, how let's go to Jackie Stallone who okay. uh, that, that's just bad cheap surgery isn't it I mean <laughs> yeah, certainly somebody with no aesthetic eye yeah this is horrendous <laughs> as well I mean Jackie has had multiple procedures. Some is people the shot on the left, Patrick, pre-surgery? Yes. yes. Well, yes. you know, she's a quite striking-looking woman. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, of course, so she is 103, had... which doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> a brow lift, a facelift. She's had chin implants. She's had sort of uh, her eyes done. She's had her um, lips done, and it's horrendous. I mean, to end up like that as well. I mean. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I think the beholder, if the scalpel in this um, instance, certainly oh, it's just doesn't shocking. know what Here's a woman who was 28 years old um, and when she got her first surgery. Her name is Hang Miyoku. I think she's quite famous in, in your business. In yes, OK. Well, this is actually a perfect example of somebody who has a psychological disorder. This girl was a beautiful Korean singer, and she thought, you know, sort of in her late 20s, she was beginning to lose her... Um, I suppose Looks. popularity and as a consequence she went to try and sort of get some surgery done. When she got the surgery done initially, um, they stopped wanting to treat her in Korea so she went to Japan and after a while they diagnosed her with a disorder in Japan as well and this is after about 14 surgeries. So they sent her back home and when she was in Korea she started, she got a doctor who gave her some silicone to inject herself and some needles. Then he stopped doing that, so she went to get cooking oil. So she injected her face with cooking oil. Now, she reached the stage, unfortunately, when she stood at the end of the street. She was a very small woman, about 5 foot 2 or 5 foot 3. Her head was so big that they called her the standing fan because she was so out of proportion, asymmetrical. And um, it got to the stage where Korean television um, brought her on and they had a national uh, campaign to get some um, money to take the whole foreign substances out of her face. They took... 400 grams out of her neck and 70 grams out of her face and even to this day she still looks horrendous. But and this she is had done that to herself, Patrick? She had done that to herself, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick, of course we've run out of time. Um, uh, there, there is a much larger issue um, um, mm. uh, um, at stake here and we don't have time to discuss it now. You'll have to come back and talk about it again. Is that mm -hmm. We still have no proper regulation in this country where this is concerned. Absolutely. So people can actually go and pay money and have this done to them yes. and there's no recourse one way yeah. or it, the it other. It is changing now because the national standards in Europe um, are um, making uh, regulations within 27 countries that aren't mandatory by law, but um, myself and a couple of people are going to go to Vienna very uh, mm. shortly, uh, and I think it's mid-April, um, to give um, Ireland's point of view towards this. And they've made a, a set of regulations that as yet aren't, um, I suppose, within legislation, but probably will move towards that. Well, maybe we can get Dr. James Riley to come on some morning, and the two of you can have a discussion mm -hmm. about it, and then maybe we'll progress the issue a little further. But for the time being, Dr. Patrick Tracy, thank you very okay, much. Okay, 